Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back, Brandon again. Let's talk about some barbell cleaning basics because it's simple, easy to do, and cheap, and it's really going to extend the usability and lifetime of your bar and help it looking as good as possible, which is important for some of us. So regardless if you've just bought a brand new several hundred dollar barbell that you wanna make sure you take care of, or maybe you bought a really cheap new barbell and it's a bare steel bar and you want to make sure or you have to make sure that it's nice and clean because it can rust a lot more easily. Or maybe it's a bar you've owned or maybe you've bought secondhand and just want to do some general cleaning up of. This video should help you. So there's three main things you're going to need for this. Number one is a lubricating oil. And I almost always just suggest people get three in one oil. Number one, it's cheap. And number two, it's usually found locally. In fact, many of you might already have some in your house. Now they do make specialty products specifically for cleaning bars. And while they might be a little bit better in terms of odor or how they're formulated. To be honest, they do a very similar job in how they clean. And again, because you don't have to go somewhere to order them, you're not paying more money, just go for the three in one oil at Lowe's or Home Depot or something like that. The next thing you're going to need is a nylon bristle brush. And I think nylon is important here because it tends to be a more stiff material. You don't want something all loosey goosey that's not going to be able to dig into the bar and the knurling. And I really suggest nylon because it's not going to tear up your bar. Some people like to use metal brushes, and if you have like a bare steel bar that has a lot of rust and oxidation, that might make more sense for certain applications. But overall, those metal brushes could potentially end up damaging your bar more than helping them. And that's because the metal in the brush could be actually stronger than the steel, which is going to scratch your bar or even the finish you have it. So if you have a black phosphate, a zinc, a chrome, a Cerakote, whatever the case may be, a really stiff, hard metal in a brush could damage that, which is something that we don't really want for obvious choices. Now, again, if you are going to use a metal bristle brush because you have a bare steel bar, I would definitely suggest looking at a brass bristle brush. And if you can say brass bristle brush five times fast, you're a lot better at speaking and making these videos than I am. But for most general people, a nylon bristle brush will be fine. And I do suggest one having a handle on it only because I've had the type that haven't and my knuckles have definitely paid the price on some of those more aggressively knurled bars. Last but not least, what you're also going to need is something to clean the oil off with. So something like an old towel, an old t-shirt, you don't have to go and buy something new, although you very well could, but there's no real benefit to buying a nicer rag because at the end of the day, you're just going to be wiping crap up with it. So those are the three things you need. And like I said, all can be found locally. In fact, you might actually already have these at your home. So in terms of going about cleaning the bar, very simple process. Do a dry brush first. And the main reason you want to do that is to get all of the crap off of it. And with that, you then go and put the three in one oil on and brush that in as well. So dry brush first, then three in one oil and brush it in again. Let it sit for just a little bit, long enough to soak into the metal some, and then go back with the actual rag and just make sure you get up off any of that excess. And to be honest, that whole process for a single bar hardly takes up any time. Personally, I like to do this on my off days because it gives me a chance to come back in the gym and still spend some time in here and it doesn't take away from my time training as if I were to do it after a training session in terms of a thorough cleaning. I say that because if you're using chalk when you train, you're probably gonna wanna do the dry brush after every single session that you use chalk. I say this because if you know anything about chalk, the main purpose behind it is to absorb moisture, mostly in your hands. But when you leave it on the bar, it's basically a trap to absorb moisture into the bar, which can thus increase the rate of oxidation. So it's a negative thing. So just taking that brush to it really quickly, just the dry form takes up hardly any time and it's going to really make sure that your bar stays fresh and looking good. In terms of normal maintenance, when you actually break out the oil, that's really gonna be up to you. I would really suggest just the eyeball test. If you notice that your bars are starting to to develop a little bit of rust, which is more than likely to happen on any type of bar, more so on a bare steel, but even some of the higher finished bars can still potentially rust depending on the environment you're in, but just give it the eyeball test. Or if you don't want to do that, set up a normal time. Like what I do is set a reminder in my phone for every single month, just do barbell maintenance. I come take a look at my bars and if they need it, I clean it. If they don't need it, I just wait till the next time that that reminder comes up. But that way, what you're really ensuring is that you're going to get the best feel of the bar because there's no rust, oxidation, things like that. The sleeves are staying relatively clean as well. And you're really making sure again that you're getting a good looking lifetime bar with lots of usability and other words that are probably difficult to say if I string them all together without taking a breath like I'm doing now. So if you have other questions or if you want to know more in-depth training stuff like how to take off a collar and clean it if it's not spinning, if it's locking up, 
leave that in the comment section below and I'll think about doing a more advanced tutorial. But that really starts to get into what kind of actual sleeve you have on, whether it has a snap ring, compression ring, a pin, a bolt. There's a whole bunch of different things with bars out there. So it really kind of makes a difference with which one you're dealing with. But if you have other questions outside of that, leave them in the comment section below. And in the meantime, as always, thanks for watching and stay big.